Nurturing Talent is a fantastic initiative which hinges on the enthusiasm of a dedicated group of volunteer graduate mentors of Somali origin. These mentors gave up four hours every Saturday over the academic year to teach Key Stage 4 and 6 form students from the Somali community in Brent about university and furnish them with skills which will help them achieve their dreams and to attempt to dispel or work around any cultural barriers present. HE STEM, the University of Southampton's involvement, was to evaluate the impact the Nurturing Talent programme had on the students' attitudes towards university. To achieve this, a baseline needed to be established. On the first session, students were asked a series of questions pertaining to their goals, perceptions and exposure to universities and what challenges they think they'll face in accessing university. A selection of their answers follows. University is a higher education institute where you carry on what subjects you want to study in the future. I don't know. The degree is when you have a certificate saying that you're qualified to do a, something like a, qualified to be a doctor or something. Um, teachers at school rarely talk about uh, university, but they do motivate us. Although they went to university, our teachers don't really talk about universities. They don't um, tell us which pathways they took, so then we wouldn't know which way, like, we wouldn't know which way we should take. Process of uh, applying to university, um, I don't know very much, but I think, I don't know, having good grades would get you to a good university. If you, it's also, yeah, that's all I think. Oxford, Cambridge, Oh. Cambridge and Oxford. Oxford, uh, Cambridge, that's all I know. Um, Cambridge, Oxford, UCL, Bruno, Kingston, King's College, um, Southampton. Um, yeah, I think there's a main one. All of the students interviewed had the ambition to go to university, but lack knowledge of what is actually entailed in attending university, what they may get out of it, and how they could get there. Their knowledge of different universities shows their lack of exposure and the focus on Oxford and Cambridge could lead to stereotyping what they feel a university student should be. The majority of the parents had not been to university, mainly due to their background. However, the parents had a strong desire for their children to access university to achieve. Despite this, none of the parents interviewed had even basic knowledge of the application process to get into university. The single biggest barrier between their children and university was cited as the lack of exposure or awareness in the general community. The mentors all expressed a desire to create an environment where they can fill the gap that the parents might otherwise have filled, guiding the youngsters through the process of making decisions about university. The baseline research shows there is a serious lack of engagement and awareness amongst members of the Somali community regarding higher education in the UK, due mainly to the lack of graduates present in the community. To address the problems highlighted in the baseline, the mentors initially used three hours a day for traditional teaching on core subjects, and the final hour focusing on employability skills, such as presenting or debating. Midway through the programme, a second evaluation session was carried out to ascertain the success so far. This was achieved through the use of electronic voting pads and a mentor-led verbal feedback session, which was recorded. Although the majority of the students surveyed during the midpoint felt that they are more prepared for the challenges they may face at university, the programme suffered from the perception that it was a sixth day of school and as such discipline issues and a rapidly lowering retention factor became problems. Based on the feedback received at the midpoint, the mentors changed the focus to include more employability skills, guest speakers and university visits. This led to increased engagement with the programme with regards to the students. At the final session, the students were once again questioned on their attitudes and perceptions of university. Uh, yeah, it has, because I want, I want to go to university now, sure. More because I've been like socialising with teachers that have gone through the experiences and done what we haven't done yet, so that they can give us tips and um, guidelines to follow. I think it's really important because you can... Um, Basically, they, they understand you and, you know, it's not hard to relate to them because, you know, you're from the same culture, you know, you share many things. And yeah, like after speaking to uh, many of the students, 
and like seeing what careers they've chosen has really inspired me to like work harder to like what I want to achieve. It is immediately apparent that the programme has been extremely successful. The students have shown increased engagement with their studies. Visiting universities is also cited as a powerful influencer. Increased motivation and a new focus on higher education related goals with both parents and mentors observing an increase of maturity in relation to education. The parents were extremely enthusiastic about the positive impact of the programme and felt that the most important part of the programme was the influence of the mentors in forging links between their children and university. The parents also indicated that their children were also passing on their experiences to their younger siblings, almost becoming ambassadors for the programme and university. The mentors found the experience hugely beneficial, observing massive positive changes in the students' attitudes and academic achievement over the course of the programme, as well as the chance to network with other graduates. They identified taking the students out of their comfort zone as possibly one of the most valuable experiences in the programme. There are several key findings that can be drawn from the programme. The most important of these are general awareness of higher education and the application process in students and parents of the Somali community is poor. Programmes such as Nurturing Talent can amend this. Traditional teaching methods are relatively ineffective on students' aspirations for higher education. The similarity to school leads to discipline issues that volunteers are often not equipped to deal with. Having enthusiastic graduate mentors from the same community as the students is vital, since the students felt they could understand the barriers and issues faced by them. Visiting universities is one of the single most powerful influencing factors, with every student describing their visits as inspiring and recommending visiting to their peers. The success of the Nurturing Talent Programme has led to the formation of several recommendations. Graduates from underrepresented communities should be encouraged to act as both paid and volunteer liaisons between the community and higher education institutions. Universities should encourage their undergraduates to engage with such programmes. Saturday school programmes such as Nurturing Talent are extremely effective but should be run as youth clubs rather than a sixth day of school, focusing on employability skills and guest speakers. Universities and the government need to actively seek engagement with the parents within communities by offering visits and workshops on application processes, university life and options. Universities and schools should work together to increase the amount of student day trips to university campuses. Ideally, two a year for Year 9 students and increasing for Key Stage 4 and 6th form students.